used to do um, a lot of promoting, right? I did. I had concert like, promotion business. Name some people that you've, you've Waylon promoted. Jennings, Jerry Garcia, uh, Ricky Nelson, uh, who was actually uh, Ricky Nelson. You know, he died in that plane crash, and I really think he was going to break big uh, before that plane crash. I'd done him two or three times, and he was packing the house. Uh, I did Jerry Lee Lewis once, but he never showed up. Uh, oh, he, he never drinking, showed up. Uh, wow. He was on a, a he was on some party train. And <laughs> how did never, you promote never back then? <laughs> or how did that? you promote back then? Just like I had a or? I had a uh, production company, concert uh-huh. promotion business, and I would call and uh, just book the acts. You know, I the person that really got me started in it was Jerry Garcia and I were good friends uh-huh. and rock Scully, who was the manager of the dead. I used to go to the dead shows all the time and I'd hang out backstage and rock Scully had mentioned it to me. He goes, man, you ought to promote concerts. Uh, Garcia's starting his own band. We'll come down there. You promote him. And that's how I got started. I started with Garcia and you know, I did uh, a lot of country and Western acts. Is, is that, uh, the grateful dead over here at the, uh, I, yeah, I did. Uh, I did all the Jerry Garcia shows at the great with, not with the Grateful Dead, just Jerry Garcia, and wound up partnering up with Bill Graham. Oh, Bill wow. Graham and I started doing the shows together, and then you know he got killed in that helicopter crash, up in the Bay Area. Is there good money in that? Yeah, real good money. There is. Yeah, there can be, but you can also you know, you can lose everything in one night. You know, if <laughs> I just you get know a about guy that. like <laughs> I just know Waylon Jennings time. was getting. Thirty, forty thousand dollars a show. So you got to figure, you got to, you know. I mean, what does a promoting a promotion guy get on that? Fifteen points. Well, what you do is you pay for the act, uh-huh. and then you pay for the venue, you pay for the lighting, uh, stage, insurance, insurance, <clears throat> that's and then you know whatever's left is your profit, and that's what that's what the promoter puts in his pocket. You know, I, I tell you one of the best shows I ever did there. Remember Johnny Paycheck? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah you know. do not. Yes, I do. He was a jackass, right? Well, he, he was a be. drunk. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because he had done a show up in Santa Barbara, and he was so drunk he fell off the stage. <laughs> so this guy was getting like $50,000 a show, and he got so bad. and he Was, was he worth partying it? partying so much. What's that? Was he worth it ever? Oh, yeah, he would fill the place up. He had, you know, take that job and shove it. It was a huge hit for him. And... So what happened was he went from fifty thousand dollars an act for a performance down to twenty five hundred bucks. Whoa. He did a show up in Santa Barbara, fell off the stage. He was so drunk, and he, nobody would book him. So I called his manager up. I was friends with Paycheck, so I called his manager. I said, "Send him in about three days early." <laughs> so he flew in like on a Thursday. I locked him in a motel room and uh, kept him away from all the alcohol and drugs. <laughs> Sobered him up, and then he went and did his show on Saturday. But uh, every time I'd see him after that, you know, he he always go, "You son of a bitch, you gonna walk in the room?" <laughs> <laughs> but he, he was he was a good guy, <laughs> and he funny. was really talented. That uh, you know that he had that novelty song, but I mean they made a movie out of it. He had uh, he made a lot of money off that song. Did he was he flipping out in the room? Oh yeah, he was flipping out. <laughs> <laughs> did you have did some guys? I had two him, guys or? that were with him uh, that you? wouldn't uh, let him drink or let him get any drugs. Uh, you know. Feeding him, making him uh, stay in the room, and you know, took him. We got there Thursday, and then the show was Saturday night. He was sober by the time the show uh, was on. Did he see you before you went on? Oh yeah, I was. Just, <laughs> he was all. He was mad. Surprise! At me. Yeah, I said, "Here I am, Johnny." But he did a hell of a show and got great reviews and uh, made up for him falling off the stage the time he was up there. Did Did you Do you have any other stories about other uh, acts you've promoted? Well. You know who Ken Kesey is? No. Anybody know who Ken Kesey is? Ken Kesey wrote One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Okay, okay. And he started the uh, uh, Kool-Aid acid test. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, yeah right. So you would yeah. go to these uh, parties, and they'd have a big tub of uh, punch in there, and it was full of LSD. <laughs> and he, oh, you know, man. And he had this, these guys called the Merry Pranksters, and... Uh, you know, you'd go like to a dead show, and they guys would show up, and you never knew what had LSD on it. You know, oh, you'd be man. careful. And we'd carry it around in visine bottles, so the cops would know what it was, and it was liquid, and we would squirt it at each other. And, uh, uh, Jeez, 
Damn, I missed all the good parties. Uh, did you ever, you know, just speaking about that, have you ever breaking broken through? Like back in the day, like to some, you know, unlocking your conscience or, or well, speaking to anyone. Several times. Spiritual. I, I just mean, don't remember. Them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, you know. Because it's more of a spiritual thing than it is yeah, recreational. In, in fact, uh, a lot of the guys, uh, uh, you know, we were getting. Do you know who Osley was? Do you remember Osley? Osley was the guy that made all the LSD up in. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. In the Bay Area. Yeah, I thought that was uh, um, Bear. I thought, I thought that was what's his face. Um, Timothy Leary. Yeah. No, he was the one that he was from Harvard. He was a philosophy uh, yeah. teacher from Harvard, and then he came out here to the West Coast, but. He wasn't making it. He was the one professing that you should tune in, oh. turn on, and drop out. That was his. Well, I, uh, I always thought it was him line. that invented it because the 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 uh, Grateful Dead made that song about him. Well, th that what they were doing was they were in, you know, psychology department at Harvard, and they started taking LSD as experiments, and then it wasn't against law. And then I think around the late sixties to mid sixties, I can't remember. 66 or 67 they started making it illegal to take lsd oh, wow. and they they all got kicked off the staff and he came out and he wound up going to jail for a while eight years yeah and, yeah and that's where i i met him through some hell's angels that were in prison and uh you know he Did they take care of him in there yeah they took care of him <laughs> oh. and he took care of that it was oh party my time. god that's a good hookup to take care of so yeah yeah, yeah. And, and he when he came home he introduced me to, there was a, we did a movie, Hell's Angels Forever, in the early 80s. And the Grateful Dead, Jerry Garcia funded part of that movie. Yeah. And uh, if you if you watch that movie, you can get it online. Jerry Garcia's in there, he doesn't have gray hair and he's skinny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's old. But uh, the thing was, Timothy Leary came home and he introduced us, like he introduced me to Dennis Hopper. And Dennis Hopper was helping us with the movie, and then he introduced us to this film director called Richard, uh, his name was Richard Chase. And uh, we took a bunch of home movies, and Richard Chase was so clever, he created this docudrama. And uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, documentary. If you get a chance, you can get it online. It's called Hell's Angels Forever. It's a good, it's entertaining. And there's good music in it. Bo Diddley, who was a good friend of the club's, uh, I used to always go down to the fairgrounds. He'd play down at the Ventura Fairgrounds back in the 80s, and, you know, we'd go down there and hang out with him because he'd come to the clubhouse and play, you know, uh, as a house band. The same thing with the Grateful Dead. Uh, back in the 60s, they would play at Hells Angel clubhouses and uh, the Jefferson Airplane, go to Golden Gate Park and hang out and party. Uh, Big Brother and the Whole and Company. Janis Joplin was going out with a club member. Uh, Chocolate George was her boyfriend for a while. And he got killed in a in a, a bike wreck. It was but, uh, Chocolate it, George chocolate color? No. <laughs> he, 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 I liked, know. he liked chocolate. Oh, he did. <laughs> yeah, that's why he called him Chocolate George. <laughs> what are some like? What are some names that you guys come up with that might have been Moldy like, Marvin, Moldy we, Terry the Tramp? <laughs> yeah. We used to give like when we first started doing red light. Right. Like we used to give people nicknames, right? Right. Like, if you were in it, we were just, like, uh, there's this guy named Gay Jesse. Like, that was his nickname. Because he used to, like, when he would talk on the microphone, he would do this. And, and we had... Uh, hills Have Eyes. <laughs> hills Have Eyes, yeah. Like, Who? this girl... The, the hills Have Eyes? <laughs> yeah, Hills Have Eyes. <laughs> it was a girl. And she thought she was, like, super pretty and shit, right? And, and they were like, hey, you look like Hills Have Eyes. Like, have you ever seen that movie? <laughs> and then, like, this girl, she came out from, like, North Carolina. And she interned for us for a while. Her name was Average because she was the best looking girl in her town. And she tried she to come to Hollywood. Yeah, it was like, you're just <laughs> you average guys, here. You guys are brutal. <laughs> yeah. They're so 